fast on offense in the half court and we didn't get bogged down and we set good screens. We took care of the basketball. But I mean, they, they also missed some shots, um, but I thought we, I thought we played with uh, good energy and you know, we, we played like this in spurts, but I thought tonight we played throughout the game like this. This is our, our obviously our best complete game of the, of the season. And three point defense has been kind of a, a problem for you guys so far, but tonight uh, held them to only four threes. I think um, what made the difference? Well, I mean, our, we were active, but they, they did miss some open threes. That's not, we can't take credit for everything, but they missed they missed some open shots. Uh, but I thought I thought our I thought our offense helped our defense. We were we were taking care of the ball, and we had good proper spacing. We took good shots, and that allows you to get back in transition. Um, they didn't get a lot of transition points, and that's how we want to play. We want to play with uh, the, some good offensive spacing because it helps your defense. It's the first part of your defense is a good shot. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, how, how did you think that uh, Robin and, and Mo filled in their new roles? Yeah, I mean, they played they, – both of them – both of them played well, like 20 points and what, 18 rebounds combined. Uh, we have to do it by committee. You know, TB, like I said, he was on his way for, to having a 16, 10 year, something like that. Um, both guys are gonna get good minutes. We, we're gonna go small with the, with the five. We're gonna just do it by committee with Rui, I mean at the five, but Robin knows how to play. Good veteran. Uh, he's getting his getting in better shape. Um, but I thought his his defensive present was good at the basket. Uh, and then he knows how to play. He's a big target, and we're we're looking for him. When teams want to switch in the league. You got to be able to take advantage of bigs down low, and that's old school basketball. But you still got to take advantage of him. He, he has an old school game. He can score with either hand. He's He's very methodical in his moves, but I thought he was good. And Mo gave us energy and it's a little bit different. Um, so that's what we like about it. And he's definitely different than the than than Robin. He's different than TB as well. But I thought they both gave us great energy. And and did you see an opportunity in the fourth quarter with you guys up 20 something to to save Brad? What's what's that decision like where you're up 20 something and Brad ends up coming into the game? Yeah, I mean they're they made a little a semi run, and um, it was the decision that we, you know, we have we haven't won a couple, we haven't won a game other than two games. We haven't won in the last what three games, two wins for the season. And we didn't want to let this slip away. And he's good. He hasn't. He didn't play last game. He had a couple of days off. I mean, he's playing. He's averaging whatever 30, 36 minutes. He had thirty five. We don't shoot around. We don't practice. He plays 36 minutes to play basketball. I think he can handle that. He's a world-class athlete, 28 years old, good looking, great family, great kids. His parents are amazing. I think he can handle 36 minutes. Ava. Anything else? Jeez, Fred? Scott. I, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, I know who to call when I want someone to just lift out my good attributes. Um, how big was Davis in the first half there, especially when he was just nailing threes in the second quarter for obviously offense, but like you said, the energy? Well, first, I mean, we, we need him to play like this. I mean, he's not going to come in and go five for five from the three every game, but he's going to have a lot of games like this. He had, this is his, really his first game that he's had like this. Maybe he had another game earlier, and I think maybe that was uh, the first Philly game maybe. Um, but... I kind of had a feeling that it was going to be like this. He didn't, for obvious reasons, didn't play a lot of uh, pickup and he didn't come early for the, you know, he wasn't signed and the season started so late and it took him eight days or so to get in visa issues and and shooters need their legs. And it was going to take two weeks or so, but it actually took more. Um, hopefully this is the start of, of how he plays, how he played last year. And, you know, he's, he's, we have him for a long time for for the right reasons, and he's gonna he's gonna provide that type of uh, spacing. The threat of him out there opens up a lot of easy shots for all of our guys, and 
but it's nice for him to make one, uh, make some. I mean, even last game, he was he's been he's been frustrated, and 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 you want that. You don't want guys to um, not be frustrated. They don't they're not playing well. But I knew I knew it would it would come around, and I hope that this is the start of something good. He got a lot of shots after last game in our arena, uh, which is another good sign. Those are good examples for our younger players to see. The game, the game is won by professionalism and toughness and, and their proper habits. And our young guys need to see that um, from a veteran. And it's been uh, three games now with pretty solid efforts from the bench. What are you seeing that's working well for them now? Well, we mix things up defensively. It's hard, you know, we don't have a lot of practice time, but we spent 15 minutes on the practice floor or the gym arena floor tonight. And we went over some zone defense, some full court pressing stuff that we can, you know, mix things up, keep the, keep them off balance. This is a good team that we're playing. They're one of the best teams in the West. And Chris Paul adds to that, you know, and we knew it wasn't going to be easy going into the game, but we wanted to change it up because you give this team a daily dose of the daily stuff, the, the, the same stuff, they're gonna, they're gonna pick you apart with their guard play. Rachel Nichols. Rachel, Please, how, are, how you? are you? I'm doing great. Good, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the lack of practice and lack of everything, really. Uh, the general managers met with the league today and there was talk of reducing shoot arounds and meetings and practices even more. What is it like what has it been like for you and your team kind of dealing with all that? Well, it's definitely difficult. I mean, what the good thing, if they do that, we don't have to change. We haven't had a shoot around basically at home or on the road for the obvious reasons. We don't want to expose our guys uh, to further stuff and our families and things of that nature. It's, it's tough. It's, it's, uh, I'll tell you, if you have a veteran team, it's much easier. And there's probably six to maybe, maybe 10 to 12 teams that, that are like that that they don't really need the practice time. They just need to maintain what they have, but we need it, but we can't make an excuses. Um, we got a, a very young front line that needs reps on the practice court, even after a game. Uh, but we don't, we can't do that. And, you know, this, this year is going to, going to pass. This shall pass as well as all the other years. And we just got to get through it and continue to find ways to improve and, Sometimes the art of coaching is finding different ways to get your players better. And this year is definitely odd because you can't get them better really on the practice floor. Did you say that you ran through stuff defensively on the arena floor pregame? Is that how yeah, you did we had, it? We had a shoot around. We have our home shoot around usually at four. We go over their personnel and some of their some of their offensive sets. But we we because I know we haven't practiced in a while and we needed some work and we spent, you know, 10 or 15 minutes just on the defensive stuff that we need done. We're not, we haven't played the defense that we know we can play, but we need to do it on the practice floor. And now we have to, we don't have that. We have to do it during shoot arounds. And like tomorrow, we're not going to do much, but the younger players that need the work are going to get some work in, but our veterans are going to have to just, you know, relax a little bit. But practices are, the whole league is going to have it. But like I said, it's, it's a league. The league knows what they're doing. They're, they, they study it and they know all the medical and they know the stuff that's out there. If we can't practice and we don't, the, our performance team, myself and our players have to understand that you got to stay conditioned because if you're not conditioned, you put yourself in a position to, to have injuries. And, and that doesn't guarantee no injuries, but you have to, get, you have to be in shape, whether we're all, you know, jump on a, jump on a bike or, or, things like that. We just got to stay in shape if you don't practice. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll take a couple more. Ben Standig. Good seeing you, Rachel. Hey, hey Scott, you, uh, in answering Fred's question a second ago about Brad, you mentioned some of his positive attributes on and off the court, things he's got going on for him, which all true, and, and then some. We yeah. Obviously, he's playing well, but it's not even just he's playing well right now. He's continued to ascend throughout his career, throughout the time you've been here. And not, not all not all these guys, all athletes do that when they get all these other things that you're mentioning, all the positive things. What do you, What is it you think about him that just drives him to keep pushing forward, even when you guys are having tough times, everything that's going on in the world? What is it about him that kind of keeps him going? Man, that guy, I love coaching him. He The resolve, 
the fiber, how he was raised, his parents. You can see he has he has he, it's very layered. It's, it's uh, he's not just about uh, himself. He's uh, very self-aware of what's going on around him as well, and he wants to make a difference. Uh, and the thing I'm impressed with, and every year he's gotten better. That's five years. I haven't been around a few of them now. Um, coaching another one from my old stopping grounds that he's got, he got better every year as well. But Brad is five years now, he's gotten better. He does it through his hard work. I see him in the summer, spend time with him. I see his workouts, those, some of his weight workouts, his balance workouts, he doesn't show the world and doesn't put it on Instagram and doesn't, doesn't care. He just does it. And it's like that old school workout. He goes to these uh, garage workouts and small gym workouts and he gets work in and he don't just come back just because you want to be a good player and you, you know, you, you say, you know, some nice prayers at night and wake up a better player. You got to put your work in and he does. And that's impressive five years in a row, but what he is about off the court is impressive. The guy's about change. He's about the right things. And, He's constantly helping out. You see what he does to the, the high school program here. He's constantly giving back. Uh, he's a big part of our team, and I love coaching him. And, you know, and he also does it, you know, he always, this is a tough year. Last couple of years, he, we didn't have, we didn't have John, but he never complained. He just kept showing that resolve and toughness and leadership. And this year, you know, we haven't had the start we wanted and, TB goes out with the year uh, out for the year. Russell's out, but what does he do? He came back today and he missed last game of the protocol. He came back today and did what he does. And that's why I like coaching him. And I, I enjoy being around him because he's about the right things. All right, last question, Neil. Better be good, Neil. Hey, Scott. Uh, how old Neto, you know, he's been plugged in a starting lineup a few times now, three out of the four times, you know, had really solid games. What about him do you think he's able to just jump in there when needed and, you know, it seems like th things don't necessarily miss a beat? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good player, man. I've always liked him, you know, in days in Utah. He just knows how to play. He's a competitor. He doesn't, you know, you set a screen. Everybody, every guard in the league gets screened, and you have choice. You have a choice to fight over or, or be like Velcro and get stick to the guy. He refuses to do that. He He's physical. He's a physical player. He doesn't, you know, doesn't take anything. He, he works for it. Great shooter. Uh, missed them, missed them open uh, threes tonight, but made a couple, made a couple of big ones, matter of fact. And, but knows how to play. Um, he's, he's like, he's like those baseball utility players. You can put him in just about any position and he's going to have success because he has a lot of confidence in his game and his and I have a lot of confidence in him also, whether he starts or comes off the bench. Hey, Robin, uh, just wondering uh, you know, how you found out the official Thomas news and, and what your reaction was. I heard today, um, and uh, it's, 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 it's sad, you know, uh, he was great for us. Our team with him on the floor was, you know, I, I, I think it, it was an incredible squad. Um, you know, I, I know he's a tough guy. Um, He's going to put a lot of hard work in. He, and he, he got better this year. He got better in the bubble. I think he's going to come back better better than ever. Christos. Hello, Robin. Congratulations on the win. I would like I have a two-part question. The first one is uh, Thomas Bryant was out. Russell Westbrook was out. But uh, you dominate on the court. What it means this win and the way that you won tonight about the potential of this team? No, I I uh, like I said earlier, we were very consistent on the defensive end. Uh, our first unit, second unit, we didn't have a lot of a lot of lapses. I think if that's something we can continue going forward, I think we know our offense is going to be okay. And the second part is how enjoyable for you is to play alongside with uh, Bradley Beal? Um, it's watching him handle the ball, watching him do his work. It's it's some it's something incredible. Um, you see something different, something special, so, so often during the game. You know, it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be here. Thank you, Ava. 
Hey, Robin. Um, in addition to all he does on court, Thomas obviously has so much to offer for just from his energy kind of that he brings to the team. Do you, um, when you're backing up, do you feel like now you have to replace that in a way or bring that, or are you guys just going to play differently and have to kind of get that from other places now that he's out? Yeah, his, uh, his juice on the floor is definitely contagious. Um, you know, I'll try, I'll try to do what I can to replace that. I don't know if I can, but, uh, It'll, I think it's going to be a team effort. It's going to be a little, it's going to be everybody pitching in. He's, he's such a big part of what we do. It's going to be everybody pitching in. And you mentioned in the last game how much you liked the aggressiveness of the second unit. Did you see that carry over to tonight? Or it's been three games now. What are you kind of seeing that you guys have been able to do consistently? I did. I did. They were flowing with the ball. They, they kept it moving more. They, were, uh, they kept the ball moving. And I, I, I love what I saw from them. Matt Moderno. Uh, hey, Robin. We haven't seen any videos of any wrestling choreography this year. If we get some more wins, are we going to see that from you? Perhaps. Um, perhaps. You know, uh, right now I've kind of uh, neglected my, my, my the thespian hemisphere of my brain, and perhaps I, I might need to get back to that in a little bit. We have to figure out who the wrestling aficionados are on the squad. Appreciate it. Fred? Hey, Robin, um, you mentioned lapses defensively, um, and obviously that's something you guys have struggled with at times this year. Is there a common thread for you in the defensive lapses you guys have? Do you see them coming because of a particular reason, or is there an inconsistency? Um, I, think, I think it's a few different areas, but my gut tells me that the biggest one for us is transition, letting our guard down in transition, not finding our matchups. Um, Taking our foot off the pedal a little bit so where the other team gets comfortable. Hey, Brad. Um, welcome back, uh, by the way. What have what the last few days been like for you as you were uh, waiting to get cleared and to return? Uh, first break my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, it was weird. Uh, like, I haven't been to the bubble, so I've, all this protocol stuff is all new to me. Uh, testing every day. Granted, we've been doing it for the past month and a half, but it's still like fairly new. Um, I mean, last couple of days, 48 hours were crazy. Um, just having to stay away from everybody and um, kind of quarantining myself for the last couple of days. Um, the positives, I've, I've been testing negative, so that's that's a that's a good thing. Uh, but they're still taking the precautionary measures to make sure I'm quarantining, wearing a mask around the guys and. Uh, and taking an extra test, I think, a day. And uh, just, yeah, it's been a little shaky, but it's, it's what we got to do with. And then to get a blowout win against a team that was seven and three coming into this, um, how'd you guys pull it off, obviously missing two starters? Well, for one, man, we missed TB. Uh, you know, it was, it was stuck for me being at home watching that. Uh, you know, as you see, I know how hard he works and how much accountability and kind of pressure he puts on himself uh, to be that guy for us. And uh, and the same with Russ, you know, it's, it's two guys that are out and, you know, that hurts us. But it's always next man up, you know, another opportunity is given to guys uh, to earn some minutes, to earn some time. And, you know, coach, coach put guys out there that played hard, you know, pretty much the same lineups as last game. So. Uh, it's, it's definitely promising to see us um, come out and compete the way we did for 448. Uh, we just got to continue to build on it. You know, don't get complacent. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Uh, stay right where you are and just continue to build. Fred? Um, Brad, I know you were last year. Are you still the player rep for you guys? Yeah. So, so I know you can't speak for everybody, but you obviously have experience with it since you are the – the union rep for those guys, you were caught up in the middle of just like a contact tracing thing. And there's been so much stuff going on with the rest of the league. Um, how have players responded to the positive tests and the contact tracing and the suspended games? Like, is there, what, what is the feeling amongst players, not just with the wizards, but around the league right now? Oh, I can't speak for everybody. Uh, I just know it's, it's just kind of one of those things where, we kind of know it's going to hit, you know, we, and our biggest thing is just trying to contain it and control it as much as we can, I guess. Um, I think, at least from my standpoint, 
you know, it's making sure that we're safe and, you know, we're in the best possible environment, you know, whatever it looks like. Um, you know, I'm sure the league and the PA are doing everything they can to make sure of that. But it is getting scarier with, you know, games being postponed, teams not being able to play and back tracing the contract tracing. And it's, uh, it's a lot. There's a lot, but, you know, it's, this is what we agreed to do at the beginning of the year. So, you know, we got to we gotta go out and get it done. And I'm not sure if, you know, the league or the PA will come together and figure out something, a different method or go to a bubble, whatever the case may be, but we haven't heard anything yet. And, and that layup you made at the end of the third quarter, that reverse, uh, what – do you practice that? Is that something you improve? No, I think you'll find another clip of me shooting another reverse somewhere. I, don't, I wouldn't say I've, I've practiced them, but I, I'm not going to say I don't practice them, but I don't sit in the gym and all the work on my. Coach Brooks makes us work on layups, actually, and the reverse layup is one of the layups we have to, we have to work on. Ava? Brad, tonight was the, um, the third straight really solid performance from the bench. What's been working for them from your perspective? What have you seen them been able to put together? Oh, just energy. You know, that's what I think that's what our bench, you know, need, you know, that's what they're capable of. And that's what we need out there on the floor. You know, whether the starters got off, good, off to a good start or not, you know, their energy is something we feed off of. And, and in that group alone, you know, we have, you know, issue brings a spark. You know, Awu, if he's coming off the bench, he brings a spark. Uh, you know, Garrison is, is loving his minutes and Mo the same thing. So it's just guys taking advantage of the opportunities they're given, you know, and uh, coach putting more trust in guys, confidence in those guys. And, you know, they're going out there and competing and making the most out of their minutes. And then what were your thoughts on just Robin filling in for Thomas for the first time tonight? Scott said it's going to be kind of by committee, but he started you guys off really well in the, under the rim there. For sure. You know, we need his presence. He's a big body, man. We didn't bring him here for nothing. Uh, you know, we need him to utilize and soak up their, their space in the paint, uh, continue to be a defensive presence for us. And then when we throw it down low, I think he's one of the best back to the basket bigs in the league. You know, those that are, those that are still left. So uh, I'm happy to have him. You know, it's definitely it's going to be a work in progress still, but um, tonight was good. He's a vet. He's a true vet. So you know, it's not it's not difficult for him. Uh, he knows the game. He knows our game. And he jails right with us. Rachel Nichols. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. I was just wondering what it has been like for you guys and you specifically. What your experience has been with. Practice, no practice. Now you can't have shoot around. Then you wake up one morning and they're like, oh, by the way, you have to isolate for 48 hours. Maybe, maybe it'll be longer. We'll see. What it, what is, oh, no, now you're playing again. What, what is that like? Uh, you just have to stay positive. You know, it can get frustrating. It can get annoying. Uh, I think testing every day is annoying for us, but, you know, we have to do it. It's, it's, uh, it's protocols and it's what, you know, we're trying to keep the game safe, trying to keep guys safe. And, you know, I feel like that's priority number one, but it is. It is kind of overwhelming at times where, you know, you have to do the extra testing and, you know, you get in late and you have to get up early to test. And, uh, so, you know, things like that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, this, this it's only for us to play basketball. You know, it's only for us to get out there and, in a healthy condition too. So it's kind of twofold. You know, you accept it for what it is, but understand it can be a hassle. But how has it changed, like, team building or getting to know guys? Or, I mean, even you and Russ oh. playing together for the first time this season? It hasn't, it hasn't changed anything in that dynamic. I mean, we still have opportunities to be able to spend time with teammates. You know, we have restricted access to restaurants and going out to eat and things and actually being together on the road. You know, we can do things, but very subtle, you know, very small groups and, you know, not being able to travel. So uh, we're, we still have opportunities to be able to build. You know, we still build here and practice the facility when we're there. Uh, you know, so – we still have those opportunities. Granted, it's not like any years past uh, in that regard where, you know, we can just do, pretty much do whatever we want. But it's uh, it's definitely an adjustment. And uh, it's one that I think everybody's been making on the fly and it's been going pretty well. Thanks. Duane Rankin. 
Yeah, just to follow up on, on Rachel's question, just for you specifically, um, crazy 48 hours for you. And then how nice was it to end that with a game like that where you guys, uh, you know, break out to a big lead and, and, and win pretty comfortably against one of the better teams in the league that have one of the better starts? Uh, it felt great, you know. Uh, I was a little peed off by not playing last game. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And our biggest thing is is making sure that we can control what we can control, you know. And uh, I knew we had a game tonight. It was a tough one. Tough matchup with the Suns. They're, you know, probably if they're not the hottest team, one of the hottest teams in the league, you know, at seven and three. So we knew we had our hands full uh, from the get-go with CP, with Book, Big eight and down low. And, you know, they have one of the best benches in the league, too, that provides a spark for them. So on all fronts, we had our hands full, but I think we did a good job of defending. Tonight was the first time I could say we guarded the right way, you know, with intensity, with focus, with, with some IQ, you know. So maybe we can move up from the parked cars now. Hey, Davis, um, first of all, what do you think made the difference in the first half as you guys built that huge lead? Uh, first of all, defense did. You know, we kept them to like 15 points in the first quarter, then uh, they scored a little bit more in the second, but I think we set the tone on that end. You know, they missed some shots they were usually made. And of course, us making shots helped too. And then, what was your reaction? We haven't talked to you since uh, we found out about Thomas Bryant and the fact that he was lost for the year. I know it's tough to see somebody go down like this. Uh, you know, he's, he's a high energy player. We're going to miss him on the court. But man, I, t I texted him immediately before he even, uh, before he even got the MRI results and said, like, whatever it is, you know, just stay positive. And, like, and I know that with his energy, he's going to, you know, work hard and come back. And, uh, you know, this, Right now, an ACL injury is nothing crazy. It just takes time, and he can use the time to improve his game and get better and get stronger. Fred? Hey, Davis. Uh, on that note, you've, you've had an ACL injury before. You've had two of them, right? Uh, times, yeah. Obviously, it's physically painful. Em emotionally, mental, mentally, competitively, all that. What is, what is that rehab process like coming back from that? Uh, and my experience, the uh, the first first time I got hurt, I was like 18, 19. Uh, that was mentally really, really tough. Like at that moment, you think just, you know, career's over. I'm not going to get to where I wanted to get. But then once once I got the surgery, once you start like getting better every single day, you feel like every time you get, get on the court or in the treatment room or in the weight room, like the next day you feel better than the day before. And uh, and that progress helps helps a lot, you know. And those nine, ten months don't even seem that that long because you just you're getting better every day. And, and do you, where do you feel like you're at right now, personally? I know you said a couple of weeks ago, sixty to seventy percent. Where where's your conditioning and and? I think overall conditioning is is up there to to like a standard of that I should be uh, during the season. Uh, I feel good. I think I can play more minutes and, and still feel good. You know, the the other part is just repetition, be, being out there on the court, playing five on five, and, uh, and also that's getting better. So hopefully this is not just, just the one game thing and rolls over to the next one. Neil? Hey, Davis, just building off of that a little bit, I guess without, with the limited practice time that you guys aren't able to have right now, is that adding to the difficulty in just getting your conditioning to where you want it to start with? Uh, as, as conditioning, I think with, uh, with as how many games we have, uh, that, that level of intensity that's on the court, uh, I think that's the best practice you can get at the same time. And uh, as shooting-wise, uh, definitely – you know, it, it would be probably a lot better if uh, we had more practice time. And, you know, with, the, with how many games we have, with how many minutes we got to play, everybody's really paying attention to recovery. So, you know, that's that's really important to stay healthy. So, you know, in some way, like, that was the, basically the only way to get some reps up was after the game. So, so the days between the games, I can actually rest and recover for the next one. 
doing. No? Yes, yes, sorry about that, yeah. Um, just, just wanted to ask about that run you had of threes. Uh, I've seen it before, we've all seen it before, but uh, how good of a feeling was that to be able to get it going like that and when and the guys really extended that lead? Yeah, and I, <laughs> that's, that's one of the best feelings uh, that you can have as a shooter on the court, uh, knocking down one, two, three, and even more in the row. You gotta have that feeling that whatever you just let go in that direction of going in. So, and glad that that also helps the team win. Last question to Christos. Hello, David. Congratulations on the win. I would like to ask you, how big boost you get uh, both uh, you and the whole team after that uh, win and with the way that you won tonight? Oh, well, getting a win is great. It definitely boosts the morale, but at the same time, you know, so sometimes these wins make you feel comfortable, even though we don't, don't have that many. You just, uh, you know, I know that we're going to stay on everybody's backs and just tell them to stay focused, you know, like not, not to be happy with this one win. Like we, we got another game in two days. And how you evaluate uh, Danny Avdias' presence in the team so far? Uh, I think he's doing a good job. He's still learning. It's a learning curve coming from Europe and especially at his age. It's not easy. You can see that he's still making mistakes, but as long as he learns from those mistakes and uh, improves every game, I think he's down, down the stretch is going to help us more and more.